Hello everyone, I'm Linda Nickel and welcome to the last session of the Happiness Hour of 2022. For 50 plus Wednesdays this year alone, we met here to connect, inspire, and create. Our guest speakers have shared their images, their tips and techniques, and a little bit of inspiration to help us all improve our own photography skills. The schedule for our upcoming presentations will be up on my website soon, but I promise you that I have wonderful speakers lined up for 2023. They'll spark your creativity and inspire you to look at the world a little differently. Please keep your eye on the schedule at lindanickel.com, and if you missed some of the previous sessions, you'll find them linked to the YouTube channel. And tonight, it's your turn. Some of the attendees will come in and share their favorite image from the last year in our session called Behind the Shot, Your Year in Pictures. Just a reminder that we'll be off the rest of the year. So enjoy your holidays and join us here on Wednesday, January 4th. All right, let me go ahead and start with Miss Christy Adams. Hello. Hi. I know where you went and I'm <laughs> hoping to go there next year. So right, go for it, Christy. Okay. So this is Iceland in the um, Glacier Lagoon. Um, I can never say the name of it. it begins with a J. Um, <laughs> I can't help you out. Yeah, out. I know. Um, so I tried to I tried to send something that I haven't really posted anywhere yet, um, except in my uh, on my Facebook. I in my um, photography page, I've been sharing like our like kind of a trip report day by day. Um, so this was in that report, and um, I just really loved the way that the red kayaks were as they were. It was a tour group, and they were sailing across or floating across the lagoon and it just you know the red just really popped out against the mountains and uh I don't know I just really loved the way it the, the story it told you know I'm not really that great at telling stories in my pictures because they're mostly just landscapes or um you know especially in Iceland waterfall so I thought this was just really cool well um one of the things when I saw this picture um and I I'm, I've seen a lot of uh, Christy's pictures because I follow her. Uh, we're friends. And so I follow her on Facebook and, and she did quite a few postings where there were just a lot of photos. I don't remember this one in particular, but one of the things that struck me of this image, Christy, was the vastness and mm -hmm. how, I mean, this is just like breathtaking. So, and this was on the ring road, right? Yes. Yeah. It's in Southern Iceland. Um, and a lot of pictures you see from this lagoon, it's a lot of people have like the shots of the icebergs very close up. So I never knew that it was that vast when I saw, you know, when I actually was there, I've only seen like the close ups of the icebergs floating and not the overall picture. It's really beautiful. Okay. Thank you. When did you go? What I, September? Was that when? Yes. You okay. Yeah. Uh, Labor Day um, for like the first two weeks in September. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> All right. Let's see. We've got Donna. Are you want to jump in? Oh, yes. Um, okay. Um, I was incredibly fortunate last year at Christmas to get a um, gift from a friend of mine who um, is a wonderful social media follower. And she bought me time with three professional photographers to talk to them either by Zoom chats or take uh, workshops or whatever. And um, it was Lee Hoy, Melissa Grew, and Alan Murphy. And um, she was telling me the story about how one of the photographers that she talked to said she had learned everything she knew about bird photography from Alan Murphy. And it ended up that Alan was the last of the three that I spoke with. And I was really impressed by um, what Alan was able to teach me in a one hour Zoom session. Uh, he had me send him some photographs. 
Um, and we talked a little bit about shots that I had already taken. And I, of course, had looked at his website and was amazed at these shots that he got with the with the wings out. And I posed a question to him of just how to improve my my bird photography in my own yard. And so he showed me some of his pictures and then he said, and now let me show you how I got that picture, which was he would show some tripods. And at the time he was living in Houston, he said this was taken in my backyard in Houston. So he had all these wonderful setups that he used to get these beautiful pictures. And it really spurred um, some creativity on my part that I live in this area, that I live in a development, but it's wooded. And I have a lot of, of, of trees in my yard that's, that have some limbs have fallen off. It's, it's kind of wild in the back part of my yard and that my lawn only goes so far. So after I had the conversation with Alan, I went out in my own backyard and on the back of my property and I pulled out these limbs and fallen branches and I literally drug them up, some of them up on my deck and uh, zip tied them to my deck railing, drilled holes in them, put suet on it. And within an hour, I started getting pictures of birds, unlike any pictures that I had ever taken before. I had taken a lot of pictures of them just landing on my deck railing, uh, but I started getting much better pictures and pictures with these wing spreads, catching them as they would would push off of these limbs. And so I've really had a lot of fun the last couple of months um, getting these shots of the birds in what looked like, uh, you know, a much more natural setting, no bird feeder showing. And this happened to be taken a weekend um, about a week before Thanksgiving, where we got 23 inches of snow in the course of a couple of days. And so the white in the background is just all this snow that has is stuck to the trees in my backyard. So I've just been having a lot of fun with um, enhancing the bird photography with these props that I've built and put on my own deck. So cool. But first of all, I'm looking at this and I want to apologize because I, you didn't cut that wing off. I think I did when I put it into my template. So I have to apologize for that because that I don't remember um, that wing being cut off. So I think it was something I did. Um, the, it's just the um, artistry of that wing being just, I don't know, played out there. It's so pretty, so pretty. So Thank you. I'm so glad that you um, shared this with us. Yeah. The thing I thought that was kind of interesting about that one was that only one wing went out and you, know, you sort of think that both wings do the same thing, but clearly they don't have to. So I hope you guys can see, I put the toolbar right on that picture. I can see. Okay, great. Is Kelly. Hello. My hey. Friend. Hey. I'm going to give y'all like two seconds of the background for Kelly. A um, month ago, Kelly? Well, I met Kelly. Yeah, probably, uh, roughly. Yeah, less than a month ago. Maybe maybe just right at a month. Um, I was, I'm here in D.C. I've been here for a while. Most of you guys know that. Um, I signed up to go to a Eagle workshop. And of course, it's in Maryland. I'm in D.C. I don't really have a, a vehicle. So, um, so the, one of the organizers said, hey, I'll find your ride. And Kelly was the person that said, hey, I can give you a ride. So I hung out with Kelly all day and uh, we hit it off so well. <laughs> I'm like, you should come and join us at the happiness hour. So um, we hit it off so well that we spent the weekend together. So Kelly is probably sick of me. So, um, but not at all. I, I was actually missing you tonight because I'm back in the Ocean City place, wishing someone were making me a charcuterie platter. <laughs> that is that is one of my true gifts for anybody that um, has me as a house guest. I make a good platter. So, all right, Kelly, tell me about this photo. Okay. Um, so I'm looking at this now and I have no editing skills. All I have going for me is that I think I have a fairly good eye and I'm working on getting off of auto. But um, I took my first ever photo workshop uh, last, I think, April. My husband booked me for it and it was on Ossateague Island and everybody was kind of lined up watching the sunrise, taking photos of the sun coming up. 
And I was a little bored. And so I wandered away to see what was going on. And I love dogs. And there was a couple there with their dog. And this was very, 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 very early. So hardly anyone was on the beach. And I saw the the couple throwing the toy for their dog. And there was just so much joy. And I got several shots. This one is kind of my favorite. I love the action. I love the joy and happiness coming off of the dog. I love his tail. Um, so I, I think I wish that his head were a little higher in contrast with the wave. I wish that I could brighten it a little bit, but I love the reflection and the action and just kind of the pure happiness. And Linda knows probably to her chagrin just how fond I am of dogs after spending a weekend with me. So um, I wish this were a shot of my dog. And sadly, I tried to get the owner's contact info, but my phone was very, very low. And as I was typing their phone number into my phone, my phone died. So I wish that I could find the people who own this dog because what a lovely shot that I could give them. So when Kelly and I were talking about, you know, maybe what shot she um, should, you know, submit, um, she, she had a couple of them, but it went back to the word joy. And she kept, you know, repeating it. I just feel joy. I see joy. This is, you know, something I really, really love. And I think that that is why we do photography. It's something for us. And maybe not everybody's going to get like, oh, the dog's not facing you. There's all kinds of things that may not um, kind of sit with people and they may not get it, but it's a reminder. It's not about them. It's about you and what you want to do with your art. And um, so I was super happy that you did decided to to submit this one. So thank you, my friend. Yeah. And as I looked through shots, kind of cleaning some of the the photos um, that we took this weekend and looking at stuff, I have a number of shots where the dog's coming towards you, but they're missing that sort of the joy of going to fetch the toy. Right. So even though this is not a front shot, I, I feel like this is a better shot because it better shows that that just complete joy of it, of being on the beach in the early morning hours chasing after a toy. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Kelly. And I, I miss the beach. <laughs> I miss the roar of the, of the beach. So thank you for that experience too. All right. So let me get the next picture up. Um, I believe this is you, Karen Slagle. Do you want to come in? I'm here. Hi, Karen. Okay, first of all, Karen was like, I'm shy. I'm like, stop being shy. Just send me a picture. So I was very tickled because she was one of the first people to send a photo. So yes, I called her out and she she answered. So thank you for doing that. I heard she called me out. (laughs) All right. Tell us about that. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. You go ahead. Tell us about your shot. Well, um, I don't live in the woods. I don't live near water. I live on the high plains where you can see 300 miles in every direction. So (laughs) this was uh, taken about a month ago. Uh, Late in the day, I was out looking for raptors. I've developed this uh, raptor addiction. And I love birds, all birds, but I really like the raptors. This is a northern harrier female. And I decided I wanted to do raptors. Well, I started doing raptor pictures, but they were sitting on the pole doing nothing. So I made it my uh, mission in life to take birds in flight pictures. So I got me a Nikon D500 and a Nikkor 500 5.6 PF lens. And that's what I used. So I go... Oh, I don't know, two or three times a week looking for birds in flight, especially raptors. And that's about the story. I like the grasses in the background showing how that's what it looks like here. It's yellow. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's open plains. You it know? is open. And, you know, the, the harrier, I, I've got several good pictures of her. But what I liked about this one, she was between, I was on the road. And there was the fence, and she was hunting in the bar ditch just right next to me. I love the fact that you have committed to going out 
and um, shooting birds in flight. And, you know, I follow Karen on Instagram and she, she does post those images. Um, for a lot of you, <clears throat> you may not know what the planes of the Texas panel, panhandle look like, but this is a great representation. And, you know, I, birds in flight is, they're difficult. I mean, I've been, you know, trying to um, do my own practice, Karen. And, you know, when we get a good shot, we have to celebrate it. And, you know, you're doing that tonight. So thank you for sharing. Well, thank, thank you so you. much. Yeah. And thank you for coming to the happiness hour. You've been one of the people that have, you know, stuck with us and, and, and have been so supportive. And I really appreciate that. Well, thank you so much. All right. Let's see. Um, I believe this, I, you know, I've lost my, my toolbar is right in the middle, but I believe this is yours, Ken. Do you want to come on in? Hello. Well, can. can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, Actually, uh, two of my uh, passions in photography are night photography and bird photography. Of course, naturally, this is a night photography shot. It was taken about 30 miles southwest of San Antonio on a county road. Uh, as you can tell from the lower left uh, part of the picture, the sun was just thinking about coming up. It was 26 degrees and I was freezing. It was January the 3rd this year. <laughs> And uh, like I said, it was really cold. I, I actually took this shot, and uh, when I got back home, I thought, boy, this is really a bummer. You know, this is not uh, what I really wanted. So anyway, I pulled the shots into um, Lightroom, and I got to look, and I thought, holy cow, there's five meters in this one shot. This is not a composite. There actually were uh, five meters in the, in the one shot, which is the most I've ever had in a night shot before. So uh, anyway, the setup was I was using a, a good tripod with a carbon or carbon fiber uh, legs. I was using a Sony A7 Mark III. Um, I had a Sony 14 millimeter 1.8 lens. And um, I think the exposure was about 15 seconds. ISO was somewhere around... Um, I don't remember what it was, 16, 1600, probably something like that. But uh, anyway, that little uh, Sony A7 III is just absolutely wonderful for night pictures and low noise. That's why, I, that's one reason why I bought it. So anyway, like I say, I love night photography. And uh, this is not my favorite picture, but it's one that I thought I might send to you and let you look at it. So I love it. Uh, you know what I like is, well, first of all, you've got all the cool toys. Um, can you remind me again, where did you shoot this? This was about uh, uh, 25, 30 miles southwest of uh, San Antonio in Wilson County. Okay. Not, very, not very far from where I live. Okay. Oh, yeah. I was wondering, um, you know, where you were going for your dark skies. So this, mm -hmm. this works. It's, it's getting really, really, really hard down here to find... Uh, Dark skies. Uh, Carnes County, which is uh, two counties south of us down here, is uh, Eagleford Shale, mm -hmm. uh, oil, an oil, uh, oil field. I mean, it's just absolutely an oil field. You pull up a dark sky map yeah. of Texas, and it looks like a light bulb in Carnes County down there. So I'm between it and San Antonio. So it's really hard to find a really good dark spot unless you drive over to uh, like Marathon or uh, Oh, yeah. Big, big Bend or somewhere in there. Uh, you know, you know this. I'm from South Texas as well. And and I'm going to have to echo your, you know, your statements about it's it's one big candle in South Texas. So, yeah. you know, we used to be able to see you know, stars forever. And it's more like <laughs> this consistent glow. But it just makes us a little bit more um, uh, determined to find that dark sky. Thanks, Ken, for sharing. Well, you can see, you, if you look on the uh, bottom right of that image, that is the glow from oh. San Antonio. Oh, wow. Okay. And the one on the left is, uh, left bottom is the sun is, is like I said, it's to, just beginning to, to think about coming up. And it was like 26 or 27 degrees and I was cold, but I love to be out there in the night sky like that. It's just absolutely wonderful to me. Thank you for doing this. Oh, you bet. You bet. 
All right, let's go to, all right, Miss Karen Riley, come on in. Um, yeah, I just love the shot. So um, earlier this year, a friend of mine had written this book, this children's book, and um, she wrote it 20, 20 years ago. And she was like, I just need an illustrator. And so um, I illustrated, so I, I'm an art teacher. And so I illustrated the first page of the book. And then I realized that took me way too long. This is going to be, this is going to be like a 10 year project of me just illustrating it. So I, um, I had watched Liz Crane, um, her presentation. And I was like, I can so do this. So um, I ended up um, taking, uh, getting, you know, like an idea board for my friend. And we sat down and we talked about all the shots that she wanted. Um, but this one is my favorite um, out of the whole book because um, it, this is my youngest daughter and she literally sat for hundreds of photos while we got the exact right shots. And um, the book is about, I don't know, 40 pages. And so um, anyway, but she's faking that yawn. And I was like, she's gotten really good at just being a little like model um, for me. Anyway, she never complained once. And I just, I really appreciated her. She was such a trooper and, um, and I just thought she, it really looks like she's yawning. And so um, I did use a program. So I took all the shots and then I used a program called Be Funky, um, which changed it into watercolor. They have tons of options, but we decided um, this was the look my friend was going for. So um, anyway, it's my favorite shot. Um, and it was just a fun experience. And it just has great memories for me and how sweet my daughter was to sit for hundreds, hundreds of shots. <laughs> Um, I know Grace Riley <laughs> and, and you owe her something. I don't know what, cause she, yeah. she, she really worked out for you. Yeah. Um, so Karen was referencing Liz Crane and, um, Liz Crane is a, um, what is the word? Um, graphic artist, phone artist. She does a lot of if not all of her images on her phone. And she did two previous sessions for us. One was um, playing with your phone. That was session 85. And then the other one was the world, the wonderful world of Snapseed. So you can check that out, session 115. So um, again, and this book is on Amazon and I have it and I didn't think to bring it to show y'all, but I do have it. It's so precious. So, all right. Karen was a little worried that she's supposed to have really a photo. And I'm like, that's really not, that doesn't really matter. It's really about, you know, what inspired you to get off your couch and do something creative. And um, Karen spent a lot of time working on this project. So that counts. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Um, Jennifer, do you want to come on in? Good evening. Hi, thank you for you? having me. Oh, I'm absolutely. well, thank you. You know, Jennifer, I have never seen the name drum with two M's. We have to joke because one of my best friends um, who is on her way to DC uh, tonight, tomorrow, um, her last name is drum too. And I thought, oh, oh wow. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. So you're probably related. <laughs> it's an unusual spelling. It, All right. it is an unusual spelling. Um, so I love macro photography. I, I have a lot of fun with it and I don't get to travel that often. And so I love that I can just walk outside of the house and find pollinators, find flowers, find things that I can explore with, with my macro lens. And um, my friend, Rusty Myers, who did at least one of the Happiness Hour uh, presentations, introduced me to uh, the Happiness Hour um, and pointed out the pollinator session with Jose Madrigal. Yes, Madrigal. Um, which I cannot, I'm not yet able to do what he is able to do with capturing the pollinators in flight. Um, but I'm really, really enjoying practicing. We moved to Rogers, Arkansas about two years ago. And I had an opportunity to go to um, the gardens in uh, St. Louis, Missouri and um, had seen lots of, of pictures there of photographers. And I have my setup is I shoot Olympus, but because I love macro and I was having a real challenge with the light sometimes, 
I got this macro uh, flash that fits on the front of my lens. And so I've got the two macro um, flashes on either side, which really helped me in this photo capture the bee and get him in focus, stop the motion. And you can even see a little bit of the light and captured in his eye there. Um, so this is one of my favorite photos from this year. Just, um, it makes me happy, but um, I, I really like the way that it's turned out and you know all of the, the practice with the flash and, and trying to perfect that. The other thing that I tend to do is use, um, I really like a soft background, but when I'm doing macro photography, especially with pollinators and flowers, a lot of times what I was getting was one part of the bee in focus, but nothing else. And so I was working really hard to think about what I'm trying to get in the picture and um, use an aperture that allows me to get more of the, the insect in there. So for this one, it was, it was a fun experience to, to be at the gardens. I love the colors of this and um, I'm just happy with the way that it would turned out. So it's beautiful. You should be very proud of it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I started photographing pollinators. Um, I didn't even know, they, I didn't even know that I should call them pollinators. It was just bees and dragonflies and butterflies, but the pollinators. And that's because Jose kind of like drove that home for me and I'm going to just, I'll say, I'm going to plug, because I know she's in this room and she's probably going to just like, you know, wince, but look at session 54. Um, okay. It's uh, Mika Geiger and Barbara Vance did um, a session for us and it was called Photographing Our Hidden World. And Mika, it does a lot of insect uh, photography and she gets in there and, and she does all the research. So every once in a while, I'll see a bug. And I'm like, I don't know what this is, but I'll just go to her feed. And she usually has their name and I can identify it that way. It's, it's cheating and I don't care. But um, thank you for coming in, Jennifer. I had, um, I was wondering, you know, how you came upon us. And then when you said Resty, it's like, well, and then you said you were from Rogers, Arkansas. I thought, okay, this is just a really interesting connection. But I noticed that you've been coming a couple of times and I'm happy to have you here. So, well, and I'm watching a lot of the the yeah. videos on YouTube. Um, we we lived in Thorndale, Texas, which is a okay. teeny tiny little yeah. town, an hour and a half or an hour northeast yeah. of Boston. So that's where we lived for quite a while. Okay. Well, I know Thorndale and I know Rogers. So <laughs> uh, so I'm in Austin. So it's it's kind of like they're all you know we're all connected, whether we like it or not. We all are in here. We're you know photography geeks, I guess, to some extent, but. Thank you for coming and sharing your photos. And, you know, you know, I think that um, our own little, you know, how do I say this? It's our own little victories. You know, we work on things and then sometimes you just get it. And it finally clicks and it's okay to be proud of it, you know, and, and brag a little bit. So this is one of those places you can do that. So thanks, Jennifer. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, Carolyn, come on in. Nope. There you are. Hello. Hello. <laughs> well, this photo was taken um, from our campground. And in October, we went to um, Prescott, Arizona. And we were camped at, this is called Point of Rocks Campground. And we just walked on a trail out from our RV right up onto these huge boulders. And just beautiful. I was up there for sunrise. And what I was trying to capture was the, um, the boulders, obviously. And then there's, it's the Prescott Valley back behind and the um, mountains. I'm not sure what the mountains in the background are called, um, but it was sunrise morning. And um, that we ended up on this trip, purchasing a house in Prescott Valley that we'll be moving to. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. So um, I'm very excited. It's just, it, it's just such a beautiful area and 266 days of sunshine versus Pacific Northwest. <laughs> Wait a minute. Time out. Are you saying you're moving from Washington? Yes. No. But at the same time, I was thinking, Valerie Hoffman, are you taking notes? This is really pretty. This speaks to me. And Valerie and I did a similar road trip with rocks and I was kind of like, hmm, 
well, this might work out even better for us. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, and it was, uh, like I said, this was just on a trail from the campground and you could just walk all over on these rocks. Yeah. And uh, I had submitted this to, um, was it Dennis Kelly that was on last yes. week? Yes. And because I would have loved to hear his critiques as, as far yeah. as, you know, um, the lighting and the, you know, everything. But um, anyway, this was just one of my highlight moments of the year because this was, like I said, in October, and then right out over those boulders in that valley back there, we um, have a house now. So we're not moving, completely moving until 2024, but because it's going to, you know, several trips, (laughs) several trips from Bellingham to Arizona. So congratulations. Thank you. One of the things that you, I think, put in your message to me um, when you submitted it for Dennis to review um, was your a photo logo, your watermark. Yes. And so I love it. So for you guys that are in the chat, she was just curious about, you know, what people might think of the logo. So if you're open, Carolyn, y'all just. Do I just- would, I would love to know um, my business name for the last 14, 15 years has been shooting for fun. Right. And I've had other professionals tell me that it sounds like I'm a, um, uh, for fun photographer. And so I decided I wanted to have my name on the photos and, um, and I, and I, whether I have my name or shooting for fun photography, I mean, excuse me, my name or Carolyn Cummins photography, I'm just not sure what other people do. Um, so yes, I'd love opinions. Okay. Well, my opinion, take it for what it's worth. I think that your name needs to be on whatever you do. Okay. Um, shooting for fun. You know, I think that's a great Instagram name. But if you are interested in, you know, setting up a website or setting up a small business, I think it's that name recognition. You know, when mm-hmm. you start, you know, when I started thinking about other photographers that I follow and uh, working photographers like Valerie Hoffman, her name is right there. It's people mm-hmm. start associating, you know, her work with her name and it just makes it a little bit more whenever I see business names and I don't, and I go to their about page and I cannot find their name or a picture of them. It drives me crazy. So I like the name on it. You guys chime in, um, help Carolyn out. Um, and you're, it's okay to disagree with me because I'd like to hear, you know, the other side of it. But, um, I remember looking for the right signature for my, uh, my logo and I had such a hard time. So this is a beautiful, I love, I love the flow of it. I love the big C's with, you know, just the, the font is beautiful. So I don't know if that's, your, you. that's how you really sign your name or close enough, but if it is pretty, it is pretty darn close. I got it from photo logo, photo logo. Mm-hmm. you know, it's- and, and it is pretty close to my signature. So um, okay. yeah. All right. Thank well, you so much. Thank you, Carolyn. All right. Let's see who's next. Okay. Ashley Campbell, come on in. Go for it, Ashley. Okay, I live in Amarillo up here with Karen, and we are really known for the wind, um, as many of you know, if you've been through Amarillo. Anyway, this, these shots were taken last January. They were all taken on the same evening, and I had really watched the weather that week because I knew a cold front was coming in, and my hope was that I could get a better sunset shot if, if I got it right before the cold front. Well, my husband decided to go with me on this one. And as we were driving out there, the wind was just blowing like crazy. I mean, we were literally coming in with the cold front. And this is about 15 minutes from our house. And um, as we were driving out there, we saw all kinds of wildlife. We saw the most deer I've ever seen in one place in the panhandle. And then we ran into a, we didn't run into it, but we saw a pheasant, which is, I mean, years ago, I saw many more pheasant, but Lately, that's very rare for me to ever see a pheasant. So I was just like, oh, so excited. Um, We finally got to this windmill. And um, I think the first shot I took is on the lower uh, left. And then um, as time went on, it just kept changing. And then I took the one at the upper, upper left. And then I could tell my husband was getting antsy to get home. So I was like, okay, okay, we can go now. We can go. And so we uh, start driving off and about half a mile down the road, I look back and the sky has changed again to red. And I was like, you got to go back and you got to go back fast. 
So uh, we uh, drove back really fast and I took one more shot. And what I enjoyed watching are those two cows. They kept moving around to the different different locations in the shots. Um, but that was just a really fun night. And uh, that's about all I have to say about that. Because yeah, you don't need to, because it's all about the color in the sky. I remember when you started posting the the series of photos on your feed and I was like, God, I just featured her. I want to feature her this next one, but, um, they were, a be- it was a beautiful series. And I, you know, I'm glad that you uh, reminded me because I do remember reading that you said these were basically all taken on the same day somewhere. I got that. So, but it's really, you know, it, it goes back to what, um, Tim Spear and Rob Doyle, who are two gentlemen that I have met through Instagram and, um, they were both in big bend at the same time, standing and watching a sunset. And, you know, they said lots of people were lined up, you know, they're taking the shot or they're looking at the sunset. And then as soon as the sun hits the horizon and it sunk, everybody's packing up and going. And one looks at the other and says, you know, they left before the good stuff happened. And, you know, the sky literally exploded. It was the first time I'd ever seen a red sunset, like in someone's picture. And I thought, that's crazy. And that inspired me to go to Big Ben. And I know I'm rattling on, but if you guys are shooting sunset, it's a reminder to just wait because it changes and it changes so quickly. And, you know, uh, kudos to your husband for doing that U-turn and and going (laughs) to you. I hope you were nice to him that evening because it paid off. It was really beautiful. He's a keeper. <laughs> yeah, good for him. Um, so um Ashley, thanks for you've been coming to the happiness hour for quite a while. Like I think you're in a couple of years now. So I so appreciate um and I notice when you're not here. So I, I really appreciate your support. Thank for, you. So all right. I love it and I learned so much. Thank you. Oh, you bet. Y'all, I'm not kidding. Next, you know, this year was great. I had some great speakers, but I'm looking at my list for next year. I'm like, they're going to be great too. So um, I hope that you guys come back. All right. Susan Hansen. I don't even, I can't even see your name on this because my bar is in the way, but I knew this. Ah, (laughs) Hang on. Okay. Um, This is a creature that I refer to as Big Boy. Um, He lives near a dock in a park on the river here in San Marcos. I go swimming, snorkeling once a week in the river here, and I look for him every time I go. Um, I've known he's lived there for years, and only this year have I begun seeing him. This one particular day, I had been looking for him and looking and looking, and I didn't find him. And I thought, oh, heck, I'll just go go on. So I turned and I was going out a little opening in the, the wild rice and just glanced over to my side. And there he was. And it was really startling. Um, but he, he's quite a creature to see. He's uh, probably 25 pounds or so. Um, and a friend of mine, uh, says he's probably about 50 years old. I don't know. Um, anyway, so this is the, the guy I look for every week when I go swimming. I, when you said you called him big boy, I was like, okay, yeah. 25 <laughs> pounds? That's huge. He is. He's not as big as there's one that lives a little farther down the river that's probably bigger and he's a little older. He's maybe 75 years old. Um, it's a little hard to tell how old they are. It's a common snapping turtle. Okay. Well, I would be freaking out if I saw this guy coming at me, but. Well, I hear they don't see real, real well, which is probably good. Which is why they snap because they. (laughs) Sheesh. (laughs) Anyway. Uh, All right. Well, season, I hope that next year you find more time to get in that river you love. And. Oh yeah. No, I, for those of you, and I forgot to look, I should have looked her, her presentation up when she was talking, but Susan also did a presentation for us. So just look for Susan Hansen. And um, the gist of it was her explorations in the San Marcos River, which is not too far from her home. Maybe it's in your backyard, I think. Well, no, it's like six miles to town. 
not far. Yeah. Just it's a hop, skip, and a you know jump. Yeah. For her. But well, thank well, you for sharing. Yeah. Susan, were you in the water? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was snorkeling, and he was just a few feet away from me. All right. Thanks, yeah. Susan. Sure. All right, Mika Geiger. I know you're in here. Good to see you all. Yeah, just like Jennifer, I love taking macro photos, especially insects. It's been, I guess, about three years since I started, and I became incredibly curious. I have no science background, no background in entomology. It's just curiosity that's kind of led me to find out about the subjects that I photograph. And usually it's like a fleeting moment. You take a photo of a butterfly and a flower or another insect pollinating. But in the spring this year, I noticed all of these tiny little things flying around and like they were the size of fruit flies. I really couldn't see them with my eyes. So I got out all of my equipment and started taking photos. And it turns out these are oak gall wasps. They, they create goals. Can you see that? I can't see me. I can. Mm -hmm. um, in, in live oak leaves. And uh, one season they have males and females. Um, and they uh, go through a mating frenzy and create new goals. And the next season it's only females. But anyway, this was incredible for me because they were right in my yard. I would take a shot. I go back. I'd look at it and say, hmm, what if I tried it from another angle? What if I used another um, an Nisi lens on top of my macro lens? I'd hear Valerie Hoffman's voice in my head like, <laughs> did you try this? How about doing that? Don't be a um, photographer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it was an incredible experience. And I photographed them for over a month. I took some videos too. Um, and it's just incredible. I think when you go back to the same place or the same subject, you get a very intimate relationship with it. You notice like the difference of it's a place, the difference in the seasons and with these insects, it was just incredible to see what they go through. And this year I've become, I've tried to take that opportunity whenever I can to revisit a subject. Like if it's a spider who has eggs, keep on going back to it. And it's just incredible. It's been a great journey and I hope to be able to do more of it. Well, what I, when I saw this photo, I mean, I kind of like, use my little magnifier the pollen i mean these the pollen so they're not pollinators at all they yeah. they don't drink nectar they don't live very long they don't eat so this is the pollen from the live oaks okay. that just collects on them because okay. this was the time of year when we had you know in texas we have the live oaks pollinate and you get yellow stuff all over your cars it's all over everywhere so the insects just pick that up oh. I mean, y'all lean in because I'm, I'm pretty blind. So I'm leaning in, but like just the detail make a, make drive me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for sharing. my You're dear. welcome. And I just want to say thank you for this whole experience with happiness hour, because it's been so great learning and overcoming some of my boundaries with speaking and also uh, the community. I mean, I've made, I've got a whole group of happiness, our friends. That, oh, you, can't, you can't shake some of those people. Like, it's no, you and I don't want to either. You know, <laughs> it, it's been great, like meeting them, going to photograph them. So thank you. It's all you, Linda. Well, you know, um, I talked to Valerie Hoffman, I think is in this room. Um, she's in Pen in Pennsylvania. And I was just talking to her maybe a week and a half ago. She's like, I got to get back to Texas because she just, I mean, it's not just because we're in Texas, but just the community that we've created here. It's not me. It's, it's all of us. And, you know, nothing is much, it, nothing is more of a compliment than um, being tagged in a photo. And I'm seeing Gail, Egidio, you, and there was another person in there, right? There was four of y'all. Were there four of you or three of you? Trish. Out, Trish. Yes. Yeah, sorry, Trish. Um, going out and photographing together. And, you know, I, I 
I th I'd like to think that it's because you met here and I know we all have Instagram in common. That's how I ran across all of you. But it it's one thing to have an Instagram friend. It's another thing to go and meet and shoot and eat with your Instagram friends. So well, and I think this is it. We on Zoom, we chat, you know, through the happiness hour. So it isn't just a stranger on Instagram. Yeah. Don't do that. So it can get it gets a little, you know, it yeah. I do it. I've had fun with <laughs> it. You know, I can't always guarantee that everybody's going to be as, you know, fun and sweet as me, but try it. You never know. All right. Well, thanks for sharing, Mika. Happy You're holiday. welcome. Thanks for having me. <laughs> that. All right. All right. Drum roll. Are you in the room, Trish? I'm here. Yay. Show your face. There you are. Hello, everyone. So I'm the one that this was not taken this year. But in <laughs> my defense, when Linda asked me if I wanted to participate, the message didn't say anything about this year. She just wanted a story. And I said, so like this kind of story. And she said, exactly. So I sent her this image. So that's why I'm, I'm the, I'm the odd person out here. But anyway, this image was uh, taken in the comfort area. This is the Guadalupe river uh, running through comfort, which is um, which direction from here, west of here and kind of east of Kerrville um, um, area. If that goes. Texas Hill Country. Yeah, it's in the Hill Country. Very typical scene of the Hill Country. And so this was fall, of course, a couple of years ago. And I was invited by a couple of Hill Country photographers to join them to go looking for fall color, specifically around waterfalls that run between Kerrville and, and Comfort areas. And uh, one of the photographers um, what had was a longtime resident of Kerrville and knew where all these cool places were along the river. And so I, of course, said, yes, I want to go. I'll meet y'all. Uh, um, a lot of these places that he knows of are on private property. But since he is a local, he knows everybody and he has permission to go and and roam around on, on their property and, and capture these images. So, of course, I wanted to go. So shot this image and this is one of my favorite images um, of running water. I love waterfalls and and running water like this and I shoot landscapes um, pretty pretty exclusively. So if you can imagine so I, I took this shot and the guys were up they they had gone on up the river a little ways and so I was making my way up to join where they were. So if you can um, if you can kind of let your eye go up to where that little peninsula kind of juts out and there's a tree right along the bank on the right. So I made my way up there and I was probably standing right behind that tree and I'm set up to take the shot. And then I don't know what happened, but my camera just fell right into the Guadalupe river. And um, I of course screamed <laughs> And I went, oh no. And so and so the guys came running down and um one of them jumped into the river feet first. It wasn't that deep, but jumped in and retrieved my camera and it was it was just filled with water. And so it it was a goner. Um and um I ended up continuing to tag along with them the rest of the day and took cell phone shots the rest of the day. But what I learned from that experience, if this happens to anyone, and I hope it doesn't, um, is that if your camera falls into the river, don't turn it off and back on because that's how you lose it. I probably could have saved the camera had I not done that because that's your instinct is to turn it back on and see if it's going to come on. Um, but you need to let it dry out. I also lost the lens that was on it, which that was, it was just all tragic. Um, but let it dry out and you may have a chance of saving your equipment. Ta -da. <laughs> I, yeah, I, re I remember the story and I felt so terrible for you. Um, but Look what a beautiful picture. 
<laughs> well, yeah, and it's and it's a good memory. I refer to this whenever it it comes up, um, and someone asks me about it. I refer to it as the scene of the crime, uh, <laughs> and then I, I, you know, I can laugh about it now. It was so sad when it happened. Uh, but what I do now also when I'm shooting along a riverbank is I keep the camera strap around my neck because a lot of times uh, I w I'm in the middle of the flowing water, but it was just a little too deep up around that bend to get in the water to shoot. And so now I I just always keep the strap around my neck. So, I mean, if it, if it goes over, I'm either going in with it or I'm saving my camera. <laughs> Were you able to, because some people do, I've heard this story over and over, um, they're able to save the images off the SD card. Were you able to do that? Yes, the, the images were fine. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Well, you know, it's kind of like a, uh, it's kind of like a, kind of a sad reminder of like, don't do this, but here's the picture to remind you of don't do this again. <laughs> Yeah, it, I hope it won't happen again. I, I take every precaution now. Well, Trish, thanks for sharing. And um, there are tons of comments in here. I'm going to ask Elaine really quick to see if there are any questions, um, real obvious questions. Y'all, you guys generated close to 100 chats tonight or uh, messages. And I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm seeing a lot of um, kind words and support for each other. And I cannot ask for anything more than that. Um, let me go ahead and close out tonight. Uh, Donna wanted to know what lens Mika was using. Okay. Thank you, Elaine. I used a, the Sony 90 millimeter macro lens along with a Nisi close-up filter. And I don't think on that one, I used the extension tube too, but these guys were so tiny. But it was those two, the 90 millimeter along with the uh, close-up filter. All right. Thanks for sharing that. You're welcome. Anything else, Celine? I didn't see anything else. If if somebody had a question, ask it now. Okay. Yeah. Um, guys, she rarely comes on screen except for the very beginning. But this is Elaine Pruden. <laughs> and she is somebody I've known for a long, long, long time. And I can talk her into almost anything because <laughs> I'm a sucker <laughs> <laughs> and that's a great thing for me. And, um, she, you know, she kind of, I don't even, he didn't even volunteer. I think I just volunteered with her for me. Like, Hey, would you just come and, you know, work the backside of the zoom and she helps me, um, get you guys in here. And, um, she's kind of one of those keep me in the background. You know, I don't want to say anything, but Elaine is very, very important to me. Um, and not just because she helps me out, but because she is a good friend of mine and she knows some of my secrets. And <laughs> <laughs> the best thing about her is that she doesn't know. She just doesn't. Um, <laughs> I need more friends like you, but um, I so appreciate you because you, you know, you stepped in and, and just, you, you show up every week as much as you can. Every once in a while, you've got, you know, something to do. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I have a life. <laughs> I know, right? But that's okay. And I appreciate you. And I want you to know that. Oh, um, no problem. Guys, I can't believe this year is almost over. Um, it's been a good year for me. I hope it's been a great year for you. Um, I hope that you have great plans and maybe Santa um, or, you know, somebody special puts something in your stocking or something that's camera related. And if it's a Nikon and you can't use it, just think of me because I might use it. Um, just a reminder that we're going to be off the rest of the year. Elaine apparently has things to do with family. <laughs> <laughs> I need to make appearance in line. So please enjoy your holidays and join us here on Wednesday, January 4th, 2023. Until next time, go out and create something beautiful. And I hope that we see you again soon.